Oh, hi. This week, we're doing another market prep vlog. Hi, it's future me popping in to let you know that I do end up updating about not only the nighttime outdoor market from last weekend, but also the events I just did this past weekend, which was the oddity market at mill number five and the outdoor market I did at a plant shop. So I'll tack a little, a little snippet at the end to uh, let you know how those went, just in case you're curious. Cause I kept being like, maybe I'll mention it. Maybe I won't. I am going to mention it. Okay. Back to what feels like 10 years ago version of me. Okay, so today is Monday. I still have not emptied the car from everything I brought with me to the market I did Saturday, but it's been raining for two days, so I'm just gonna wait for that to dry off. I have to repack it, because I have to pack my tent and my table and a chair, both my garment racks, so the tree one and the like long rolling one. I guess they're both on wheels. I have to re-tetrisify the inside, where the inventory bags don't necessarily need to get unpacked though I will be adding to the sling bag bag, but I can probably just leave it in the car and toss them on top, so it'll be fine. Before Thursday night, I need to empty that because I'll have to haul all my stuff for alterations night to the brewery and that takes up like not a ton of space, but enough. I gotta get my like sewing machine and all of my accoutrement in there. Like I bring a cutting mat and an ironing board <laughs> and like, like a small ironing mat, but still takes up a bunch of space. All right, as far as market prep checklist stuff, I've checked all the lights I got last week. All of them are working great. I'm very excited about how they're gonna go. Fingers crossed it goes to plan. I have extra batteries as backup. Everything is battery powered. This is the layout I have for my tent. And then I'll have my six foot table. This is my last outdoor market display. I do like the actual table setup, the towers I had, because I can't do the same setup as an indoor market because I set up very tall and then things are literally like, hiding under the tent. So I don't want to do that. And this is just way more open and not blocked off. So I think it has better flow to it. Bag tower here, bag tower here, jewelry stuff in the middle. Then I'll have my bigger bags, like my totes and my slings on my tree rack, and then all of the clothes on the garment rack. So that's going to be my setup. So I will have the small bag section at the front of the tent on one of the sides. This can be like flipped, reversed. I'm gonna have a small folding like card table at the back as like a little checkout station. So I'm not in people's face, but it's clear like this is the person who runs all of this stuff and just give some room depending on how things are on the back side of my tent, if people need to come through or not. I may have my garment rack like at an angle or something, gonna, gonna feel it out. And then I'll have my tree rack up at the front. So like bags will be here. They'll be able to see there are clothes from a distance. Like that'll be easy to tell what it is. And then once they come in, they can see like the jewelry and the other bags and stuff. So I feel good about that. I did decide where all my lights are gonna go. So I would have two like camping lanterns. They put off a lot of light. So I'm gonna hang those from the top and I'll just use S hooks to hold on to those cause they have little handles. And they're also magnetic. So if I put them upside down on something, I can do that. Then I got a strand of like cool white bulb lights. Everything is cool white because I'm not a yellow light person. I got a 26 foot strand of bulb lights. So I'm going to have it across the front. I'll have like the center of the strand at the center front of it. That's 10 feet across the front. So I have 16 more feet left of usable light strand. So I figure eight feet each side. It's a 10 by 10 tent. It's going to almost get to the back of the tent, which is not a problem because the entire backside of the tent is gonna have the curtain lights that I showed in the last video that I unboxed. I think it's gonna be a good setup. I have seen a really cool like light net on top of the frame of your tent, but under the canopy cover. So it's like the whole roof is lit up. I think that would be really cool, but I couldn't find any in the color way I wanted. And I think, I think that covers everything. I'm feeling very confident about this setup because I had so many negative attempts at setting stuff up in the spring. There are multiple reasons for that. I'm just not as well versed in outdoor markets as I am indoor markets, so it's kind of a different ball game. Feeling like I got this. It's gonna be nighttime. It's supposed to be dry. Hopefully I didn't just jinx it, but on the cooler side, because it's November, so of course. So the two things I wanna make for just the display are little twist ties for the lights, that, like the curtain lights and the bulb lights, like the strands that are going around the frame of the tent. I don't have like bag twist ties and I'm not gonna go buy those because I have a bunch of this 
like floral wire. So what I'm thinking is cutting it and then using that to twist tie all of the strands of lights to the tent because I don't have clips or anything else and this seems like a discreet option. I could also kind of like wind it around the frame of the tent if nothing else or use tape. This seems like a more elegant solution. I don't know if this week is going to be the week this happens. It would be nice but it's also very rainy so we'll see. But I yoinked this banner out of the trash when the uniform store I was at was closing. I don't actually even know what this side says. Just one of the shirt companies we used a lot. I want to just spray paint this side black. It is like a textured vinyl, so I think I should be able to. And then on this side, I think even if I just go over it with Posca pens. So yeah, literally like saved this out of the trash. I have two more that are on the smaller side. I guess this can go either way. If I take my old signs that I made and ha I've used them one time, if I even just attach them to this and hang it, that's something. Yeah, actually I do think that is a good move because I have two this size. They're white. The background of the signs I made are white. I, I think I just figured out what I'm going to do for these. That's been bothering me because I want, I want some kind of signage and why not use what I already have. Also, I've been talking for like an hour between ending last week's video and starting this one. So I'm going to, I will update with whatever I end up working on. Okay. Hi, it's Tuesday. Halloween actually. I did end up doing more admin-ish type stuff. I did replace an ink cartridge so I have one of these boxes full. I use a HP Instant Ink is like a subscription thing. So you buy a printer and they have a program where depending on how much you print every month I think I'm on like the 50 sheet a month program. What I like is they recycle the cartridges, which is super rad. And I only pay $3.99 a month and I get unlimited ink. Like this is why I don't stress about printing out full color sheets. I also made this other sign. I don't think I've shown these, but when I got the racks from the uniform store I was working at before they closed, I was able to nab two of these signs as well, where they just kind of like screw on to the bar on the rack. And it's the same length as a piece of paper, so it's 11 inches, but it's only like six and a half or something tall. I just had to trim the top and bottom, but has some cardstock and I'm very pleased with that. I just wanted to point out all the clothes are handmade and then just encouraging people to try stuff on. I will have my mirror again. And then, right, sorry, I forgot when I started talking about that. I have six cartridges to return and it looks like I can just put it in this little envelope and stick it in the mailbox. I think they send you different sizes depending on how much you're printing just so the ink doesn't get dried out or anything. At first I was like, am I gonna print enough to do that? But between the signage I make and then the trivia nights that I run, where I have like full color visual rounds that I hand out for everybody and I have to make like 12 sets of those and the answer sheets, I do end up using basically all of the pages and they roll over. And then I'm sure there's some extra charge if you do end up printing more than that. Like if you go over your minutes, is that a thing that still happens to people? Probably not. <laughs> if you exceed your data limit on your phone and they just charge, you know, an extra whatever for that month, I think it's that kind of thing. And yeah, I don't know. I just really like that they take them back and recycle them. So that is neat. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm gonna toss that in the mail. I'm glad I just did that because that reminded me I also have an Etsy order. It's funny, I was venting to a friend of mine that like, I should just heavily discount all the totes because clearly people don't want them. While I was talking to them or while they were responding to me, I got a notification that someone bought one of the Exploding Tardis totes on Etsy. So like maybe I ride out the holiday season before I, I do that because they do like bags make good gifts. That's part of why I think, especially near the holidays, I do better selling my stuff because clothes are difficult. Oh, I did end up cutting up a bunch of pieces of that floral wire. So I have ties for the light strands now. I cut eight inch pieces. I don't know if they're too long, 
that's fine. I didn't want to risk them being too short because they have to go around the whole frame of the tent and I, I'd rather it be longer. Also, it'll be that much easier to undo if they're longer and I can see them because if they blend in too well, it will make breaking down difficult. Then I came up with some size tags because I just, I don't have anything marked. It has stopped raining, so I think I'm gonna unload the car while I'm thinking of it. Okay, it is still Halloween and I have done nothing spooky. I did see someone in a Deadpool costume on a motorcycle while I was running an errand though, so, you know, still, still got the vibe of the day, but I realized the zipper alteration, mending, repair, whatever, that I needed to do. I didn't have one in house that was gonna work. So I had to go run out to the store to acquire one. And while I was there, I was hoping to get a folding stool. All I want <laughs> is a tall seat that is also portable for when I do events. Doesn't seem like a big ask, but it is really hard to find said thing. It said they were in stock at this store and then they were not, uh, which is frustrating, but I, I can't control that. So I'm chairless, but I did get this like long, I think it's six feet long by two feet wide, like area rug runner thing. Cause I want to put it down the center of my outdoor setup because I see a lot of other places put rugs down. I, I really like how it ends up looking and this is like a nice charcoal gray and I, I think it will work out just fine. Obviously not if it's like rainy or muddy or something, but especially being on pavement, I think having something like that will just like add some zhuzh. So that was like 18 or $19 then yeah, I got the zipper, which I just want to double check while I have it here. I somehow forgot to grab a receipt. I don't think I've ever forgotten a receipt at Walmart. Let's see. It goes from there to there. Oh, it's like an inch longer, but there's a gap between the top tooth and then where the hood starts. So I think I can make it work and that'll give me the extra inch I need to make this fit. Where I couldn't find any 21 inch ones. All, all there were were 22 or like 36. <laughs> so at least the one I was able to find was a close enough size. And then also someone at the Goodwill I went into did in fact wish me Merry Christmas. And we were both absolutely losing our shit at the checkout. <laughs> it made me very happy. But I don't know if y'all remember me complaining about how I was having a really hard time trying to shop for little shopping baskets for my markets. So I got like little teeny tiny itty bitty baskets that are really only good for the jewelry. But I, but I found there's only one. I don't know what descriptor I need to put in to find this. Cause like metal basket with handle, like this, this is exactly what I want. This exact size. If it was a little deeper it would be fine, but, but this is perfect and it makes me really happy. So I have a shopping basket that I got for two bucks at Goodwill and it has sparked the most joy. I've been back for like 20 minutes and Bert is only just now realizing cause I'm finally talking, but he's just been asleep under my desk while I've been gone running errands. What a cute boy. Oh, also I was rambling forever at my fairy god Cheryl and decided I'm going to dig out one of my old display pieces I haven't been using since I got my grid cubes because I'm 99% sure that's what I want to use. Let me grab it and I will explain. Man, the frequency with which I am surprised I don't shatter the overhead lights in here. My spatial awareness is not my forte. I have a bunch of just like old things that I don't use anymore. I think what I'm gonna do, I haven't even shown you the thing I was digging out. This, I want to use this. I'm gonna do a quick little test to see what everything looks like. I'm gonna do a quick a quick mock-up while I'm here and I have everything out and then I can decide the essentials of what I need to bring and that way I'm not just bringing extra shit. But this is really low and this is as tall as it goes. So I think, oh actually, I think if I set it up like this, perhaps 
that seems like a decent height. I mean, I guess I can do it here. This is a, this is a good like leaning height. I think I like this. That's fine. And then, but something like this, right? Like, put this here, or I have this more center. Have this like that. No, I don't like how that looks. I do like how that looks though. Yeah, because this can be like the impulse purchase section. So I just use my phone to check out. So it's not like I have a POS system other than like the little swipey thing that I put in my phone and I don't use a cash box. So like there's not really even anything to put in here other than my own drinks and stuff. But what I want to do is put some of the fairy lights like around this. I think that'd be really cute. And also here just to add some zhuzh, you know, the only thing is, Hmm. I gotta, I gotta scope something out. Hold on. So if I have things like this in here, right? Like that's, that's cute. And then some of these actually, you know what? That doesn't, that doesn't look as bad as I thought it might. That's fine. All right, cool. Well, that answers that. And then I'll put the rest of this display stuff somewhere out of the way. Yeah, I'm very happy that I took the time to fuck around with that because this is gonna look so much better than what I was originally thinking. Yay, I'm excited. I think it's worth the time I've been putting into this. And the carpet was like one of the most expensive things I bought. That's not true. A lot of the lights and everything have been expensive and like the table cost a lot. So it's fine. I'm looking forward to having all of that put together. It's gonna look so nice. It's gonna look more legit. I think having an actual checkout stand is going to make a big difference for like where I feel comfortable being and not just like looming around. Like I have a dedicated spot and like people know to come to me there and uh, I can make it look cute. I'm not usually like, I don't know. I'm okay with having art and posters on the wall, but I'm not a like seasonal decor kind of person. I don't like temporary decorations and few things are less temporary than a four hour event. It's taken me a little while to kind of hone in on this sort of stuff, but looking forward to it. Okay. Yeah. I think I feel like unpicking things. That's kind of like, I don't need a lot of brain power to do that. That's where I'm at right now. So I'm going to lean into it. Maybe make some tea. Okay, hi. I'm wearing the same sweater, but it is the next day. I, I have a different shirt underneath it, so that's that's my justification for wearing it multiple days in a row. <laughs> but the pattern I ordered a couple weeks ago came in the mail. This is that walkaway dress. I, I've just never seen a dress go together this way. And I have like a page printed out of this. Actually, let me grab it. Hold on. Yeah. I've literally like had this page printed out because it has these pieces, right? And I was going to try to figure out how to scale it to my size, but the thought of doing that was stressing me out. So, so I didn't do that. And then this, yeah, was $10 including shipping. So that, that seemed like a fair amount to pay for like the, the stuff I'm going to learn figuring this out. So I have some bed sheets I can mess with for the mock-up. I'm gonna keep that in my way because I know I keep saying, oh, I'm gonna do these dresses. I haven't sewn a garment. That's not true. I've still, I've sewn like inventory garments, but I haven't like tried a new pattern in a long time or tweaked any of the patterns I've tried and like want to adjust before I make another one. So I think that will be good. And then it looks like I got a check for the hats I did last week. I'll put a picture here of the hats. I had a batch of 25 of them and I sewed patches on. I wasn't sure what to do for the pricing because I did have to use my uh, spray, my, uh, what is it called? Basting spray. So it sprays on. I think it goes away when you wash something, but it's really good temporary thing. It does say won't gum needles. Can confirm. I've, I've sewn through it a bunch and like, that's the one problem with basting tape is that it does gum up needles if I put it on a zipper or something. So I don't really like doing that. And then what else? Oh, I 
fixed the zipper on the hoodie that I had for a repair. On the original zipper, the head kept coming off and then the person whose sweater it is, she didn't realize that the teeth were broken here. She just saw like the zipper head kept coming off. And normally you can use like the fork trick to get a zipper back on to the teeth, but that was not an option there. So this is what I had to go out and get yesterday. I think it looks pretty good. And then I did a darning job, which is very time consuming and you have to be like super precise with it which is not always my favorite type of work to do, but once in a while it's, it's nice. So there's a hole in this sweater and I did a little patch weaving and I'm really happy with how it came out. So that's done. Today's Wednesday, so I can bring that with me to alterations night tomorrow. And then while I have my laptop open, I'm going to check there's a fabric order and walking foot order I made a month ago because did I tell y'all that I accidentally threw out my walking foot? I don't have words for how I was so upset for like two days over that because the one I got was very expensive. The replacement I found is not that pricey. Oh good. So that's supposed to get here Saturday, but it was free shipping from this place. I think the foot was like $35, $40. And with how much I use my walking foot, definitely worth purchasing that. I know I threw it out because any of the places it would be, it isn't. And knowing the way that I was distracted packing up all my stuff after my last alterations night, not that it was a bad thing, but I had friends that were talking to me and I can't multitask. I know this about myself. If you're wondering, how do you accidentally throw out a hundred plus dollar piece of equipment. <laughs> that is how, you know, it's, it's probably like this big, like size of a two matchbooks strapped together. <laughs> I was very frustrated with myself. To be fair though, I bashed needles into that old one so much that like it was getting kind of janky. Like it had seen some shit cause I had it on my machine almost all the time, unless I was doing top stitching or zippers or something. So yeah, it, it was probably time to get a new one anyway. So I'm trying not to be too hard on myself, but that one was a gift from my partner. Even just that, like I'm mad at myself for being irresponsible with something, anything, but especially a gift from someone I care about a lot and something that expensive. So that is what I was upset about. But thankfully, because there's been a couple more people over on Patreon, which is like, I feel like I don't deserve it, I guess, is the end of that sentence. But I was able to purchase a replacement without, I mean, I had meltdowns, but not over the money of it all. And that doesn't often happen. So I appreciate everybody's support over there because I was able to get a new version of something that is very important to my sewing space. But anyway, I ordered it a month ago and cause I got fabric as well. So I would end up getting free shipping. I had to wait for them to cut the fabric. And then I guess one of the fabrics ended up being out of stock when they went to cut it for me. So they had to wait for that to get reordered. So like, I understand why it's taken so long. I had really wanted it when I was doing the house moving castle cardigans and I was already stressed about that. I still haven't heard from that person. Ooh, I'm gonna check the tracking right now. See if that guy sent it back. Still hasn't even put it in the mail. So hopefully that does end up getting back to me. I am frustrated and being impatient that he hasn't even put it in the mail yet. Not everybody is as anxious about everything as I am. So he, he, he's probably not doing it maliciously and is just taking a little while to have the time to do it. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna, do a little bit of tidying. I have a couple hours before I'm gonna head out. I'm gonna bring my laptop to the brewery tonight so I can do some video editing and like relax while I'm doing it. I think that'll be nice for myself. And yeah, in the meantime, once I clear off my desk, I'm going to print some fabric. I haven't picked out any specifics other than like one bag I wanna make. So that is probably the daunting part, but I have a bunch of canvas set aside to make patches. So like, I could also just do that. There's a specific fabric I've made some stamps for to like turn into dark monster version of some cute fabric. Like I made some horns and I think I need to carve some fangs, but it'll, it'll just take a couple minutes. So I might work on that as well. Oh, I also have Patreon mail to pack. I don't think I have enough envelopes for what I'm going to send out though. So I might go pick up more. So maybe I'll just send that stuff out tomorrow.
Oh, I can see the envelopes right here. I definitely don't have the right size. I need some big honking envelopes. I put what I think is a very fun kit thing together. When I was doing the pet sitting job, one of the work things I did do, and it was just for the fun of it, but it was with this intention, is I did a bunch of watercolor paintings that came with instructions. So it was like a, like a Hello Fresh, but for painting. <laughs> I put together a second piece of watercolor paper. I'm sending the one that I painted and the instructions for the artwork so that whoever receives it, like each of them are going to be different, but whoever receives it can like do their version of the painting. I think that will be cool. So I thought it'd be a fun like we can kind of paint together type of type of deal. They're getting a piece of artwork and also like a project to do if they feel like it. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna have to pick up envelopes for that. Okay, I'm gonna go start doing work things. Also, Carrie, can you tell I try to hit it and I, I know I'm not, but I'm, I'm attempting it. I did do Stephen King trivia a couple weeks ago and I did have to say that name a couple of times. And uh, I, I feel like I hit it perfectly one of the times. Anyway, I've never been known for my mimicry. <laughs> she mentioned Craft in America? Crafting in America? I've been watching it on YouTube. There's an episode I'm in the middle of and it's a really cool series. I'm enjoying it a lot. So thank you for mentioning that to me. And then there's something else I got messaged about. Oh, it's a thing I can't talk about. But yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be fun. <sighs> okay. Off I go. I am tired even though I slept in this morning because I brought in uh, an entire rack's worth of firewood and also got a fire going. Been doing a lot of like house chores, but I feel like I got a good workout in and upstairs is warm now because it's the first fire I've built of the year and it's November 1st. It feels appropriate. November usually needs it. Probably could have done it a couple days ago, but it was raining and I didn't want to bring firewood in in the rain. But I digress. I'm going to go do the things I keep threatening to do. But for real this time, I will check in later on. Okay, hello. I did some fabric printing and it didn't go great. At least for this design I've had in mind for months and months and months and like it might still be workable in some capacity. I'm not feeling completely defeated, but like not in a headspace to mess with it today. But I made these little like mini stamps. And I think what I'm gonna have to do is add some kind of backing to this. If I add like a long handle to it, like metal stamping stamps, like those dies, do something like that might fix some of my problems. Then I can cut this down even more and have it like be super precise. And then these are the little horns I came up with. And I was trying to turn all of these into like evil animals, but alas, the only thing I did try and worked, but I want it to be more than just these couple little spots is this Easter fabric that I added little fangs, but I want the fangs to be white. And then I made their little eyes red and I I like the red eyes, if nothing else. So turning all of these into like banicula, I think <laughs> would be fun. Get some zombie Jesus fabric going. <laughs> oh boy. So it's Wednesday. I, I just took the sweater off I was wearing before. So it's still the same shirt I had on this morning. You just didn't see it. I did just eat. It's like 4.30, 4.40. I'm gonna take Bert out and feed him dinner early. And then I will pack up my computer and go to the brewery and hang out there and work because I'm not feeling super focused today. I don't know what it is about the week, probably just dehydrated. And you've probably noticed, I used to drink in every video when I started this channel and I do have beer in my logo and I do work at a brewery, but for the most part, I don't really drink that much. <laughs> I have my times, like if I'm visiting friends for the weekend and they're drinkers and we go out for Mai Tais or something and then we make drinks back at the house, like. I will have multiple drinks over the course of the day and probably multiple days in a row. So it's not like I don't get into it a little bit more, but that's like a couple times a year, if, if that. Where most weeks I have like a beer and I'm also a very slow drinker. So when I go hang out in the tap room, like if, if I get there for five and I stay till clothes, I will be surprised if I get through two beers. <laughs> Just if you're like, well, if you're dehydrated, maybe don't drink beer. I, I will be refilling that water bottle and I'm not going to be going deep in the paint. So I'm actually genuinely surprised how beer does not mess up my stomach 
with how sensitive it is to so many types of things, but maybe that's the German in me. Anyways, what I did do is cut up a ton of canvas. I printed some patches. I did the skull print. I haven't used that lino block yet and I really like how it came out. Like it's cute. I like it a lot. I definitely just need more practice with printing on fabric. I do still have the Our Flag Means Death partridge or pheasant. Pheasant? Partridge. Pheasant. The lesser known cryptid but one I love is Doer Koo, which is a Irish one and also known as King Otter. He's like a little river monster and I love him. So this is my interpretation of it. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody is gonna know what it is, but I think having it in a batch with maybe not this, cause this just looks like a bird and that's fine. But people that have seen Our Flag Means Death might know, especially if I do it on pink, which I do have some pink patches and do it with blue. But yeah, I really want this with Mothman and my jackalope and just have like a little set of cryptids like keep building that line out. I will go back over his eyes with some red acrylic paint markers and I can hear Bert jingling. So I'm gonna grab him, we can go outside and then I'll feed him early and then I will go do a bunch of editing. Would you like to greet your people? He's so cute! Are you upset I had some food without you? You mad I ate sandwiches and I didn't share. You get early dinner. Are you excited? Oh, he gets a scoop of pumpkin with his dinner and he loves it. And I'm glad because it's something that he needs in his diet. And he, he's actually pretty amiable as far as getting any of his medication. He actually just got his heart guard and Simparica, which is like the flea and tick thing. They come in like treat form. So he just loses his mind when he gets to eat them. I understand the appeal of frontline, like the topical thing. I can't handle having a gooey dog. <laughs> All right. Oh, and because I got those alterations done and they're for my boss, I'm pretty sure she's working in the tap room today so I can drop those off. Part of the stress of doing repairs for people is like I am in charge of their clothing until I get it back to them. So when I'm done and I have to wait a couple more days to get it back to them, it like looms over me like a, an ominous presence and I don't like it. So I'm looking forward to getting that back to her. Um, oh, other than the patches, I did print the panels for the Mothman bag I wanna make. I'm just doing one just to see how it goes. And like, it's imperfect, but that's kind of the nature of block printing. So I'm curious what the response will be to it. So I just wanna make one. If I wanna have it for an oddity market I'm doing next weekend, I need to let it cure for a week. So I can't sew that till next Wednesday. And the patches aren't gonna get sewn separately. Like they'll get trimmed down a little bit, but those just need to sit. So if I don't print patches till tomorrow or even Friday, then, or I think even like Saturday morning, that gives the ink time to like do its thing. But anyway, I will probably check in tomorrow. Which is Thursday, this week? feels like it's giving me extra days. The days aren't going by slowly, but I am surprised it's only Wednesday. So I appreciate having an extra day because I have a Friday market and I thought this week was going to feel a lot shorter, but not seeming to be the case, which I appreciate. So I found envelopes that I, I think are going to work for these watercolor kits. I'm sending out to everybody. So I have a whole pile of watercolor paintings that I did and there's instructions for everything on the front side so that everyone can have like the step-by-step -step instructions and then like just to send mine along and that way when they do theirs it can be like a little paint night hangout kind of thing. And here's the thing right I had a lot of fun doing these but if you compare this to the example they give down here not very good and that's okay. I had so much fun doing these. They were like one of my favorite parts of my pet sitting adventure was just like chilling, watching Taskmaster, doing some watercolors, hanging out with dogs. It was lovely. So this is like very therapeutic for me. So I hope it's not like super lame <laughs> to be sending everybody paintings that I don't even think are very good. <laughs> Those aren't gonna fit in the mailbox. Also, I can't use regular stamps on large envelopes, so I have to go to the post office anyway. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, 
I'm going to do that. Keep watching some market vlogs, I suppose. And I might stamp some more fabric tonight. I did get most of my video edited. I got to just do like the fine tune watch through and like add any of the B-roll clips. I don't have that many to add to this one. And I would like to get that done tonight, but it is 9.23. So I'm feeling particularly motivated at the moment, but I had a late start. I did go to the brewery and I barely finished one whole beer in like, yeah, almost three hours. Oh, I think I can hear Bert doing little squeaks in the other room. I'm gonna go give him some tummies first. He's definitely losing his eyesight, little guy. He's like having a hard time finding the water dishes, so I have to help guide him over to it. But he he seems unfazed, other than little things like that, where he he's clearly like looking for something and doesn't know how to get to it, but he only ever needs like three things. He either has to go out to the go to the bathroom, he wants his food, or he wants some water. So an easy animal to sort out. But I just I feel bad because it's gotta be disorienting. Or maybe he just doesn't really notice and doesn't remember what it was like when he could see things. I don't know how dog brains work, but it makes me sad because he's old. Okay, hi, good morning. It's th Thursday. It's also 1 p.m., so it's not morning anymore. Somehow a short and long morning at the same time. But I got my video editing done. It always takes longer than I think it's going to. And I just want to reiterate how much I appreciate getting to be on a every other week schedule because this is most of my week, right? And getting to break it up a bit or just, you know, the project I wanted to do a video on. Now I have time to like workshop how to make that do the thing I wanted to do because it didn't go to plan the first time and that's okay. And like, I don't have to scrap the whole thing now but I have the, the window of time to do such things. I did only just remember that I made a list at the beginning of the week and I thought we could go over it together to see what I've actually gotten done, if anything. So let's see, cut ties, little metal ties. I did that. Attach signs. Oh, my, uh, my banners, yeah. Garment rack sign, I did make that. Slings, I haven't sewn the slings yet. Alley zipper, I did that. The darning, I did that. I printed the size tags, but I have not attached them. And I, I like punch the holes and cut all the corners. So maybe that can be a tomorrow morning thing. And then editing is the other thing, which is completely done now. So slings is the only thing. Oh, and then I, I put little timestamps when I'm editing my video because I like putting those little, um, I cards up in the corner. <laughs> so like I'll put one here for the video that is currently rendering so you, you can see what I'm talking about. I, I don't know if there's another word for it other than just like the cards but I like time stamping it here when I'm editing because it means I don't have to deal with it in the actual like YouTube studio program on my computer. So I think that means it's time to sew some sling bags. So let me let me show you the prints that I have ready to go. And I can use black thread for all of these. So that always expedites the process when I can just like knock through the same color. So I have glow in the dark skulls, especially doing a nighttime market. I think that's gonna be really cool. The shiny foil one. I don't actually remember what's in here. Hello? Right. Then I have this like, uh, deer skull, people skull fabric. I just really like the colors on that. And then what's the bottom? Oh yeah. And then this, I have another one of these cause I sold out of the ones that I made before. So trying to do the thing where like, oh, if these designs are selling out, probably ones that I should make more of. I'm gonna get to work on these, get as much done as I can between now and yeah, three o'clock. I got a couple hours. I have just under two hours to do as much as I can. And then I can keep working on these when I get back. Honestly, I could bring them with me so that I have something to sew if there's any like lulls between me getting there and like people bringing me stuff. Actually, that's a great idea. I can bring it and then sew if I need to. I'm gonna get to this and I will check in later on. Give updates about the alterations night. Okay. <laughs> Happy Friday, I just realized. I don't know if my video finished uploading. Oh, thank goodness. My computer shut off part way through yesterday. So when I got back from my alterations night, it was only at like 50% uploaded. I was like, what? But 
all better. Anyways, I finished this one yesterday before I even left the house. I like this a lot. I had just a couple small things to do for people yesterday. I had like a pair of pants to hem. I had to patch some holes in a jersey and then I reattached the armpit seam of a sweater someone had. So nothing extreme, but that meant I had time to finish one of the other bags, which means I have three of the bag. Oh, wait a second. No, I only have two. Cause I did the mushroom and cat one before last weekend's event. I did these two and there were six total. So there's only two in the bag. So I think it's what glow in the dark skull and my like metallic foil one. Oh, and I even started pockets. Heck yeah. That feels very good. It's 9.15 in the morning, so I gotta leave here by 1.30 to get to my event, and I need to stop and get gas on the way. And I will like, need to eat and, and be a person today. I did do groceries like 8.30, 9 o'clock last night, so I'm very happy to have gotten that out of the way, because normally Friday is my like errand day, but I didn't have a very big shopping list, so that also expedited the process. And I don't know if I've shown y'all this bag before but it is a pocketed tote and uh it's from Rwanda my boss from the brewery went there on a humanitarian effort uh last year and brought me back this tote and I love it so much when you get it zipped up there's a little heart shape that comes together it's such a great idea I've never seen a bag that does that so I love it very much. It makes me think of popples. <laughs> I don't think anything else of note happened yesterday other than I got to hang out with the moss to my Roy and that was that was much needed. I hadn't seen her in a while so hi thank you for hanging out with me <laughs> and yeah I'm I'm feeling good about the event today. I think it's gonna go well. I believe this one cost me either 30 or 50 dollars for the booth. I'm actually gonna double check that. Just kidding. It was only 25 dollars for this table. I have two more markets with this event runner in this town and I think the December ones are 50 dollars and then 80 dollars for like a Friday and then a Saturday one. So I don't think they've done one on this. It's called First Friday. Uh, it's like an art walk that's happening in downtown Concord and I'm I'm excited about it. I think it's gonna be cool. It seems like something me and my sister and my nephews would go check out. That's always a good a good gut feeling for me. So, well $25, that is a not so daunting overhead to compensate for. I know I spent a bunch on lighting for this. I bought a rug for this. Those will continue to get used as I do more events though. I just remembered, I think I need to patch one of my sandbags. Maybe I should do that right now while I'm thinking about it, because I don't want one of those to break while I'm doing my event, and I don't want sand all over my car, because I've already spilled sand all over my car from this. I'm gonna do that, and then I will sew these two bags. Then, if I have time, I will do the garment size tagging. This feels good. I like this not feeling completely panicked, rush, con crunch type. Ah! leading up to events now that I'm not being so hard on myself for not having like a brand new inventory every event. It's it's the weird upside of not selling that many items is that I don't have all that much to replenish afterwards. And of course part of my thinking is okay if I get these sling bags done then that gives me time to like replace the mushroom one someone bought at last weekend's event and make a whole new design out of the like glow-in-the-dark woodland creature fabric I have because I think a glow-in-the-dark fabric at a night market is fun but I do I do have some glow-in-the-dark fabric so it's okay. Oh, anyways I'm gonna stop rambling and get to the stuff I want to finish. I will check in hopefully between now and me heading there but I will definitely show you what my setup looks like. I don't think I've ever documented my outdoor setup before which I'm sure was not intentional in the moment, but maybe subconsciously because I was really unhappy with how it was set up. And it was raining both of those days back in the spring. And I, I was not in a very good place when those were happening. So um, I feel good about this. Okay, off I go. All right, it is quarter past 12. I got last two bags done. So that makes four and then I still have the cat one that I made last week. I only sold the mushroom one 
but I feel very good about this. So, ooh, I'm excited. Yay! Also wanted to share a couple goodies I was sent by Coda. Thank you very much. This is so cute. This is something that he makes as keychains, I believe he was saying, and took the hardware off so that this could be a little toy for Bert. He hasn't played with it yet because it's 12, 18, and he is still in bed. <laughs> and then some pieces of fabric that will absolutely get used. I obviously love this one so very much. And then I love this extra hard because my body is a lemon. So I'm gonna feed the wood stove and then I should probably just get Bert up and take him outside. And then I think I will do the size tagging for the clothing since I have time. All right, we're making good progress. Okay, hi, good morning. It's the next day, Saturday. The event was last night. My package from the sewing center that I replaced my walking foot from and also got some fabric from has finally arrived. I just want to make sure the things I need are in here. <laughs> so here we do a little unbagging. Um, Marie's Sewing Center in New York. There's two locations um, is where I ordered it from. I got my industrial from a place called Marie's Sewing Center, but that is in Massachusetts, so unrelated, I guess. Okay, I got some cork fabric. I'm excited. I've never sewn with cork. Ah, oh, thank goodness. I've been so upset. Yeah, this was $32, so nowhere near as expensive as it once was, but... not having a walking foot has been a little frustrating. You know, I was stressed out that they fit this in my mailbox. Oh, I don't think this was everything. Let me double check my order. I don't think this is all the fabric I ordered. But while I'm here, um, this is a black hound's tooth. Ever so slightly metallic. Starry night thing. And this is also metallic. And I like it. All right, yeah, I'm looking at my order and I had the cork, I got the houndstooth fabric, I have the walking foot, this fabric, and then this fabric. But then there's, I think it's like a black metallic version of this. Anyways, as far as how the market went last night, it takes a long time to set up the lights and I knew that was going to be the case, but I got the earliest slot I could. So I need more than an hour and a half to put my stuff together because that's including putting the tent up by myself. I mean, it also took me over an hour to break down. Part of that was me running across the road to get burritos and use the bathroom at a place called Dos Amigos that I really like. There used to be one in my hometown, and for some reason they closed, and I cannot fathom why, but they're still going strong. Up in Concord, if nothing else. I got burritos at the end. My booth fee was $25, and then I spent, I think, $3 on parking, and I made 60 in sales, which I know is not, like, outstanding, but I more than doubled my table fee, so I'm still gonna call it good, like, worth doing. There was a lot of attention paid to my sling bags, so that made me feel good. And like, even if people weren't buying it, because a lot of people didn't even know the event was happening, so $55 is a lot to drop on something you like weren't expecting to be happening. And there were a lot of us there. I think there were like 25 vendor, no, 20 vendors. So yeah, I know I didn't pay myself for like any of my time for being there or like the work I put into the things, because it was mostly covering the overhead to do the event, but I am tired of b being disappointed in myself at every single event I do, so I'm just at a like calm, peaceful place where like I didn't lose money on it. I comfortably covered all of my expenses, gas included, so like genuinely didn't lose any money on it, and especially for the stuff I ended up selling last night. Those are all things that like sometimes I just give away, so the cost of labor to make them and materials almost feels negligible because I make all of those things in like 
giant batches, so it's not the same as, you know, the three hours it takes to make a sling bag or whatever. So, yeah, a lot of people were checking out the garment rack. I thought for sure, because it was so cold last night, that people might want some of that stuff, and having 20% off didn't, didn't seem to make a difference, so I don't know if it's that things are overpacked. I, I think I gotta kind of streamline what I put out and have it as like a collection and not just whatever I happen to have made because I put like everything on it and not everything goes together and it it's kind of a confusing aesthetic compared to everything else. So I'm gonna work on that. I don't know. I'm getting in my own head. It doesn't matter. I haven't unpacked the car yet because I didn't get home till after 10 last night. So I'm going to go back to bed and lay down with Bert and watch the new episode of Great British Baking Show, I think. And then I will eventually reset for the week because I have another market this coming Saturday. But that's another mill number five. It's Oddity Market. And then I'm doing a daytime outdoor event Sunday that I keep forgetting about where there's a plant shop that's hosting a little pop-up market. They didn't charge me anything for a space. It's a negligible amount of a drive to get over there, so I just need to bring my own setup, and I think it goes from like 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., so I don't need to bring my lights. Anyways, I'm trying to do the math on when this is gonna go up, and I think, since I just posted last night, this won't go up until week after next. So unless I do some groundbreaking inventory thing, in the lead up, I'm hoping to make like my Mothman bag and have my patches, but I've already shown you those, so like, I guess if I finish the Mothman bag, here's how that came out. I, I guess if I hopefully do end up making more sling bags for those events, here's how those came out as well. And uh, I guess I can pop in and do a, a little, a little mini recap as to how those events went just for those of you that are curious. So here's future me, I guess. Hi, yes, it is I, and I will indeed update you on how the oddity market went and the outdoor market at the plant shop. I did bring some new items for the very first time, so all the patches that I made, I ended up adding to my setup, and I did end up selling three patches on Saturday, and then another set of three yesterday, which Made me feel really good. I also gave one away and there's one more I'm going to give away because they're ones that I made of Bert. But I have to say the coolest part, I, I felt so good hearing the response to this is like people not even knowing the fuck this is and it being a completely original design because like I didn't have much to base this off of. It's just one of the ways I draw animal faces and and just turned it into little little fangy boy and uh a lot of people were just like i don't know what this is but it's a cute little monster and i love him without any additional context and it delighted me so where i suppose if i went up to a table that had some like original monster guys i i would also be excited about it anyways I had been talking about editing down my garment rack and not putting all of my available clothing out. And I also made signage that said all garments are handmade, whatever. But I had 10 to 12 things out at the Oddity Market and I ended up selling two things. I haven't sold a garment in so long, so long. So that was a, a good positive reinforcement to like, yes, you, you can bring as many clothes as you want, but only display certain ones and like make it look like a cohesive collection. And I'm gonna keep going with that gut instinct. And then likewise with the sling bags, I didn't have every single design out. I did figure out a new way to display the bags, which was hanging the sling bags in the front at different heights, but I can only fit five across because like they're pretty hefty size bags. Then I can hang two off the side, but then I realized I have grid cube pieces going across the top because I hang the slings on the underside of those pieces, but I basically have a shelf. So I did add more grid pieces up there and and it did occur to me i could add extra pieces and kind of like add across the whole top 
that wouldn't be the worst thing because they're not super heavy. That's likely not gonna like overwhelm their eyeballs if I add stuff that high up. I have to get on my tiptoes to reach that stuff. So I obviously had to like grab things for people because I know not everyone is a Goliath. Yeah, I got a lot of attention on the bags. Again, I only sold one of them and it was one off of the top as well. It was the wolf fabric I had. I do have enough to make one more bag, so I will be adding that into the mix before my next events. I have this coming weekend not off because I have errands I have to do and like I'm cat sitting for some friends of mine. So I'll technic technically be working. And then yeah, I'm doing a Black Friday event and then I'm working for the brewery th that Saturday and then Sunday I'm doing another market for myself. So I'm looking forward to it. Also, the nice part is that they aren't charging anything for those. It's like a 45 minute drive to get where I need to go. It's at like a car dealership or something and they're letting us use eight foot spaces. So what I'm gonna do is bring my six foot table and then have my garment rack off to the side and that seems like it'll be adequate. So I'll do that for Friday and Sunday. And then speaking of free to vend events, the plant shop yesterday, it's right on the main drag in Derry if you're familiar with that area. It's where like a roast beef restaurant used to be. It's a great little spot. They've done such cool stuff with the space, but yeah, they closed off the parking lot and then a whole bunch of vendors set up. I think there were at least 12 of us and there was a pizza food truck and then my friends that make cupcakes were there. Actually, they're the couple that I did the uh, wedding dress alterations for. But yeah, it was very cold yesterday. My car, I have noticed, yells at me when it's cold, <laughs> so as if there's something I can do about it. I don't know if it's like a safety feature, but if I'm gonna have to go through six months of my car dinging like the check engine light is coming on, it's that kind of sound, but just telling me like, warning, it's, it's cold outside. Like, yeah, I had to go to the outside to get into the car. I am aware of the temperature, <laughs> but it went from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Everyone was packing up by like, 3.30 just because it was getting so cold and like there weren't any more customers coming out for that but there was a decent crowd. I really didn't know what to expect but especially it being free and it was if nothing else one more way for me to test my outdoor setup and like really fine-tune it and I'm very delighted with how it's been coming together and the decisions I'm making to not overwhelm everything. I sold a couple little dumpling pouches. Almost no attention on the garments but that's okay. Like I was the only person with any kind of clothing there and it's not like people could really try it on because it was like 30 degrees outside. I complained about how cold it was, but it was dry and very sunny. So like in the grand scheme of things for a mid-November outdoor event, I'm very content with how that ended up going. Oh, uh, at the oddity market, I did get a custom order from someone. So not only did I sell two already made items, which made me feel really good, like just color block stripey dress situation that I made with some maroon fabrics that I really really liked. That's one of the things like had it not sold I was going to keep for myself but that's okay. I'm glad it's on to a new home. And then yeah I sold one of the rainbow cat sweaters where I still have two more and then someone custom ordered one. So they had said earlier in the week they were doing online shopping so they had their measurements on their phone and the only thing they needed to do for me was measure from their shoulder down to their wrist so I was able to uh, make sure everything was going to fit how they wanted it to fit. Oh, like financial stuff, the table cost $50 at the Oddity Market and I made about five times that back and then yesterday I made, I guess there wasn't a table cost to cover, right? I want to say it was like $120. I don't know why I'm guessing. I have my Square app <laughs> right here. 110 for yesterday. I'm trying to do quick edition. $6.37 out of fees. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, for real this time, back to whatever else I was saying and trying to close out the video so that everyone can move on to whatever else they're doing for the day. Okay, something I failed to mention about the event I did Friday. My like tree garment rack, you can't see it very well, but the one with the arms that come up and go out, fell apart <laughs> while I was trying to cart it across the parking lot. Two of the bolts came out, so the whole thing just like collapsed in on itself. I found one of the bolts in the parking lot, so I was able to get it 
attached enough, but I basically had to carry the whole thing, so the wheels weren't even helpful. But it stood during the event, so it was fine. Obviously, that needed to be remedied, so I took one of the bolts out, brought it to the hardware store, fit it in, there's like a, a gauge size chart thing, where you literally take a bolt and you stick it in whatever hole fits, and there's like coarse threading and fine threading. I had never done that before, but I was like, I don't know, this seems like the gauge I need to be using. And then someone came over and here's the, here's the real groundbreaking part. I let them help me, which is new for me. I also let someone help me with something yesterday as far as car batteries and like therapy is working. But not only did I get help getting replacement bolts and I bought four of them. And then I also got a dedicated Allen key to keep with the bolts, with my toolkit for events and everything, so that I can take care of this shit on my own if it happens again. And it feels really good. I feel like a strong, capable woman. <laughs> As for me, I deeply appreciate that I don't have to stress about getting a video sorted out this coming week when I have two events in the same weekend. That gives me, like, no time to exist myself so I promise I'm gonna try to take more breaks and like actually take evenings off in the upcoming week but not having to add a whole video into that mix it's made me more excited for when this video does go up the following week and I'll just get more time to get more stuff done for the busy season hopefully for my business because there's there's such a small window and you can make hay while the sun shines so getting to dedicate more time to that I very very much appreciate it and it is thanks to everybody over on Patreon that I'm able to do this y'all are so supportive everyone here is so supportive and the fact that those of you that are financially supporting me doing all of this stuff want me to take care of myself over have more content put out it means the world to me, so thank you all for being here. I'm looking forward to what's gonna happen in the next two months. All right, and I will see you back here every other Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Was anybody else a duct tape wallet girly back in like middle school, high school? The checkerboard one really, really makes me very happy. Uh, I, I don't know the last time I used it on something, but it's my favorite because Ska never dies. <laughs> edited it down. Edited it, it, it down. <laughs> I don't think. Question mark, maybe. No, I don't think so. Or?